All right, another mock draft coming at you guys. I will say that as you are watching this, as it comes out, I will be live on Twitch for the Combine. And even if you're watching this the next day or the next day, for NFL Combine coverage, we're doing a watch along. It'll be me, Drew, maybe some other guys as well. If you guys know Not the Expert, Wheels. Uh, we'll be on Twitch, twitch.tv slash bangle. The link is in the description, doing a combine watch long talking football. So make sure to stop by. Link is in the description, twitch.tv slash bangle. And let me talk to you about the 2021 NFL draft real quick before we get into the first pick. Is I And I think everyone kind of thought this way, is that with the extra year, with the COVID year, right, where you could have an extra year of college eligibility, that meant that the next draft class would be stacked. Because all that talent that came back, boom, you're going to have all these amazing players and it's going to be one of the most stacked draft classes in recent history. However, while that has been true for depth, there are really, really good players. Like you might get a second round caliber player in round like four or five. At the very top of the draft, there still is that lack of what you call a blue chip prospect. So there are some good players who are certainly near the top of the draft who are very, very solid players. Aiden Hutchinson, Kyle Hamilton, Kayvon Thibodeau, you know, some of those names that we've been hearing for the entire year. However, based on how these guys, especially the quarterbacks, would be viewed in previous draft classes that we've seen in the past few years, like the edge rushers do not compare to Chase Young or Miles Garrett or either of the Boses. The quarterbacks certainly don't compare to some of the quarterbacks we've seen. The tackles don't compare to some of the tackles that we've seen. So these guys, like, would any of these players be a top 10 pick even as far back as last year? And that's the big thing where a lot of the draft analysts are saying, you know what? No, they probably wouldn't be. So that means there is so much that we don't know about how the draft is going to shape up. Usually there seems to be a pretty good idea, pretty good consensus of the top couple picks and how the draft will probably go, even though there are curveballs. This year, anything can go. Like there are four, maybe five different number one overall picks, and that depends who's even picking, right? Maybe the Jags try and move down. But uh, for this mock draft, this is the pre-combine. I'm going to do one after the combine as well. And live on Twitch for that, twitch.tv slash bengal. We're going to start out with Evan Neal. Really good player, uh, really athletic. This is one of the highest ceiling players in the draft, meaning that maybe he's not the best player in the draft right now, but based off of his size, his athleticism for that size, and uh, you know, you think you can coach him up and be one of the better tackles in the league. That's the hope anyway. For the Lions, we're going to go Aiden Hutchinson, keeping the Michigan guy in Michigan. Really solid edge rusher. There are a number of different guys who have him as the number one player in the draft. And I think that's certainly fair. For the Texans, I think I'm going to go with Kayvon Thibodeau. There are some concerns with Thibodeau that have been still circulating with maturity. I still think his tape's really good. I, I really can't speak to the character of the person because I don't know Kayvon Thibodeau. But I know what I see on film, and he's still really good. And played injured on an injured angle or ankle. He's a really solid player. I still feel like he should go top five. Guys drop in the draft all the time for character concerns, if you will. And again, I can't speak to those very much, but that is the rumor. I still think Thibodeau is a great player. I could see him going top three for a team like the Texans that absolutely need to take best player available. As we get to the Jets, I think it's Ika Mekwanu, Iki Ikwanu all day. I don't really see any way he falls out of the top four. I really think the top two tackles will be gone. And I think we'll probably see at least Aiden Hutchinson gone. Thibodeau is one who I could see making it to five or six or seven, depending. Um, and then Kyle Hamilton is like kind of the natural best player here. Although I think the Giants would take Charles Cross in this spot. I think there could be some teams that have him as a number one tackle in the draft just because of his acumen as a pass protector. Really, really good player. And uh, he's athletic, too. It just doesn't really have that, that mean streak to him as a run blocker that a lot of teams look for on the O-line. As we get to a team that probably is upset the top three tackles are off the board, do they take a QB? Do they reach for another tackle and maybe Trevor Penning? 
uh, maybe even Kenyon Green, and you can play him on the interior or try to flex him back to left tackle. Played a little bit of left tackle at a and Not a ton, but a little bit. He was supposed to be their everyday left tackle for 2021, but that kind of didn't work out the way that they had expected. And by they, I mean the Texas A&M Aggies. So what do you do here for the Panthers? I think this could be the first spot we see a quarterback go. I'm going to go Malik Willis. Seems to be interviewing well at the Combine, too. At this, I, had, I know it's pre-Combine, but on-field stuff. And the athleticism's there, the arm talent's there. And, uh, yeah, I, I could still see him going even higher than this, to be honest. As you get back to the Giants at 7, probably not going to be a quarterback. Man, I've kind of been thinking how Joe Shane, the new Giants GM, is going to approach this draft. And he seems to have a real, real, like, understanding of positional value and really wants to, you know, draft accordingly. So I don't think you're going to see some of these non-traditional top picks go. But at the same time, you do have two. So would you take an offensive tackle or an edge rusher with number five and then opt to go best player available, even if it's not one of those premier positions at seven? I think you might. And I think Kyle Hamilton is good enough to make it make sense. So Kyle Hamilton is the guy for me at seven. And of course, Joe Shane, assistant general manager of the Bills, knows about good safety play and how that impacts the defense. Look at Micah High, Jordan Poirier in Buffalo. And number eight, I think this could very well be one of the non-top two edge rushers going, and that's this grouping. And it depends whether you want Johnson, Walker, or Jabo more. I like Walker a lot, and it seems like NFL teams really do as well. They really love his athleticism and versatility from everyone that I've talked to. You know, Trayvon Walker's been viewed pretty highly for a long time now, and the media is now catching up to it. And it's good to see Trayvon Walker getting buzz. He was kind of overshadowed on that Georgia defense, but he did the dirty work. He did a bunch of things that you need to do in order to make the defense tick, and that oftentimes is dropping back in a coverage. And for someone that's 6'5", over 270, it's pretty impressive that he can move the way that he can. So again, I think teams are going to value that versatility. And we're going to keep the Georgia boy in Georgia. I don't know that he's from Georgia, but went to Georgia. As we get to the Broncos at nine, I want to go corner here, but I don't know. They just feel like they're in a weird area where they don't necessarily need to take a corner, but that seems to be the best players available, whether it's Ahmad Gardner, Derek Stingley Jr., Trent McDuffie. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. It's between quarterback because quarterbacks go high and linebacker because I think they really do need linebacker. I love Devin Lloyd as a player. I really like N'Kobe Dean as well. The Broncos, I think, could really use an upgrade at that position. However, it's not a traditionally premium position that would go top 10. We've seen some guys go top 10 at linebacker. Isaiah Simmons, Devin White. But I don't know. Would the Broncos take Devin Lloyd at nine? We still don't know about their quarterback situation, but I am going to mix it up because I pretty much give them a quarterback every time. I'm going to go Devin Lloyd at nine. I think he's really good, and he would be the heart and soul of that Broncos defense. And I feel like that's what they're missing. The defense is great in general, but they don't really have a true like, stud linebacker, in my opinion. At least I can play off the ball. They have, obviously, Bradley Chubb, but he's an edge. He's not like a true off-ball linebacker, even at all. To get to the Jets at 10, I think the Jets are all over best player available here. Took Aquano at four. I think it could be the best receiver in the draft, and they would have their choice here. Or maybe taking one of these good corners. I think their cornerback group is pretty good right now. They're all young. They're all getting better. So I think we're going to take a receiver. And to me, I think we're going to take Garrett Wilson. I've done Drake London at this spot before. Garrett Wilson's a really, really good player. And some have him as the best receiver in the class. As we get to Washington Commanders, the Washington Commanders at 11. I think this could be a quarterback as well. I don't know that they necessarily need to take a receiver. Corner could be upgraded, and the corners are good at this point too. Would you opt to take a quarterback later or wait a year? Those are options. Let's go with Sauce Gardner at 11. I know quarterback is absolutely in play. 
but I want to mix it up a little bit since I've done that a lot. And I want to give you guys a little bit of a, some other options. Vikings at 12. I think we're going to go back to back at corner and take Derek Stingley Jr. Very, very good player when he wants to be. Injuries have really hurt his draft stock, I think. Otherwise, he might have been talked about like a top five player at this point of the year. Browns at 13. I think it's got to be receiver. They're just too weak at that position. Jamison Williams rehab is going way above schedule. And I love watching him at Alabama this past season. I think he's a stud. I think he could end up going top 20 for sure. Especially now that he might not miss any time. So Jamison Williams at 13. Former Ohio State guy. Finds his way back to Ohio. Ravens at 14. We're going to go edge. We're going to go David Ojabo. Team him up with his former high school teammate, Adafe Owe, and they could use edge. A lot of free agents, a lot of aging players on that team. Ajabo is a stud. And, if well, has the potential to be. He's a, an athletic freak, still developing as a pass rusher, That's a, and especially as a run defender. But uh, the tools are there, and teams draft based on traits a lot. So Ajabo kind of fits that. And we have the... Eagles at 15, the first of their three first-rounders. I think Jermaine Johnson makes a ton of sense being available at this spot. I think Trent McDuffie makes a ton of sense back-to-back -back as we upgrade the defense, corner, and edge. I love both of these players. I think Trent McDuffie could be the best corner in the entire draft. I, I don't know. I feel like you just don't see guys that can do it all like him. I kind of project him as someone that I would love to play nickel which is kind of a less valuable cornerback position, but he has all the traits to be able to do that incredibly well, which is the willingness and aggressiveness to tackle. He can play man coverage. I love Trent McDuffie, but he's also stud on the boundary. So, you know, he could absolutely stay there. Chargers at 17. I've gotten Jordan Davis here a lot. I still think it makes a ton of sense, but we're going to mix that up. We're going to go Trevor Penning at 14. Got to protect Justin Herbert. The offensive line is coming together. You got some really good pieces for Sean Slater, Corey Lindsley. But if you take Trevor Penning here, I don't think you're forced to play him as your blindside protector because you have Rashawn Slater there. So Penning can just be that mauler, maybe even play him at guard early on in his career. But I think he can stick a tackle. I think he can be your right tackle. I think it's a really good position for him. And it's a really good fit in LA. And we're going more offensive focus. There's a lot of depth at linebacker. There's a lot of depth at defensive tackle and edge. I don't think you have to take one there. There's not a ton of depth at offensive tackle in this draft. And this could have been a corner as well if you wanted to take, you know, Booth or uh, Kyler Gordon, McCurry or even. Elam's dropping because of injury stuff. But uh, is it, still a good player when he's healthy. Could end up being a steal for a team. Saints at 18. Did this last week. I'm doing it again. I'm going Sam Howell at 18. Quarterback number... Two off the board. He was maybe considered to be QB1 going into the year. Didn't exactly materialize, but it seems like some teams are still very high on him. Lost a lot of his playmakers last year as well in Daz Newsom and Diami Brown and Michael Carter in Javante Williams. So yeah, it's going to be a little bit tougher, but get some pieces around him like you have in New Orleans um, with Alvin Kamara, with Michael Thomas coming back, then maybe draft a receiver in round two. You got something there. I, I know the receiving core is not great at the moment, but Michael Thomas coming back would be big. Eagles, their third pick of this first round. We've got edge, we've got corner. I think with Tyler Linderbaum still being available, that's your Jason Kelsey replacement. And Tyler Linderbaum's kind of like Jason Kelsey light, right? He's a, a lighter interior offensive lineman that moves really, really well. I'm describing Jason Kelsey, but that's Tyler Linderbaum. So... I think it makes a ton of sense. And then Pittsburgh. Do I just keep Kenny Pickett in Pittsburgh? Pitt QB going back to Pittsburgh. I know he's from uh, Ocean, New Jersey. Shout out Monmouth County. But uh, yeah, like he's proven he can play at Pittsburgh. Um, you know, Heinz Field has been his home stadium at Pitt, so... I think it makes a ton of sense for a team that needs a quarterback. No Malik Willis on the board. I like it a lot. Patriots at 21. You know, it's funny. I want to take Devin Lloyd here, but he's gone. And N'Kobe Dean doesn't really fit 
what the Patriots usually look for at linebacker, which is length, size, uh, even though he's very, very fast. So don't really think any of those guys are a true fit there. Traylon Burks being available at 21, I think makes a ton of sense. Really, really good player. And we know the Patriots are going to be able to utilize him in a bunch of unique ways. I think that's a really, really good fit. Raiders at 22. I think I did this last week. I'm going to do it again. Kenyon Green is just so good. Really, really athletic on the interior of the offensive line. Has experience playing a bunch of different O-line positions. Think kind of like Elton Jenkins at Mississippi State. So to me, Kenyon Green just fits there for a team that needs to upgrade their O-line in any way possible. Going edge here, I'm going George Karloftis. I think he's a good fit for the Cardinals defense, potentially replacing Chandler Jones. J.J. Watt might end up leaving as well. And especially, like, you can't count on those guys getting older too. So Karloftis at 23. Cowboys at 24. Probably disappointed that Tyler Linderbaum's not on the board. I think Zion Johnson as a plug-and-play left guard would certainly be uh, considered very highly at this point. But I'm actually going to go receiver. I am. And I'm going to take... I'm going to take Drake London. Now, this seems a little bizarre, right? Cowboys don't need a receiver. They have Amari Cooper. They have CeeDee Lamb. They have Michael Gallup. Even Cedric Wilson's not too bad, right? Well, here's where some things can get a little bit weird. Michael Gallup is a free agent. Don't know if you're going to be able to bring him back. Now you're down to Amari Cooper, C.D. Lamb, Cedric Wilson. Heavily, heavily rumored right now that Amari Cooper could be traded. Cowboys would save a lot of money by doing so. And then suddenly, you're down to C.D. Lamb and Cedric Wilson. And can I name a fifth receiver actively on this Cowboys team? Um, they still have, who's the Ohio State receiver? Noah. Noah Brown. Noah Brown. I, I think they could go receiver here. Drake London could go as early as top 10. So he's excellent value at 24. I'm going to take Zion Johnson here for the Bills. Now, their uh, replacement left guard actually did play well down the stretch. But Zion Johnson can play right guard. He is experienced now at the Senior Bowl playing under center. Or playing center, I should say. So Zion Johnson, versatile interior offensive lineman. Really good player. Him to the Bills just makes a ton of sense. And then the Titans at 26. Bunch of good receivers still available. And I think we're probably going to end up taking one. Got to improve that offense. Got to get more weapons at receiver. Like, I like Nick Westbrook, Akina. He's cool. I love A.J. Brown. I want to love Julio, but it just seems like he's past his prime. Injury is getting the best of him. Which, you know, great career. But we got to look to improve on offense. Let's go Chris Olave. And then with the Bucks, accidentally double click because my mouse sucks. But Jahan Dotson of the Bucks makes a ton of sense. Might lose Chris Godwin, Rod God. Got to have more options at receiver. Jahan Dotson, I think, fits. More weapons for Kyle Trask. Ugh. Packers at 28. We're the best edge rushers available at this point. You know who actually makes a ton of sense for this team is Boye Mafe. He's a little raw. He's crazy athletic, and I probably should have saved him for post-combine because I think he's going to tear it up in the, uh, the on-field drills and the time stuff like Shuttle 40, um, Recone. So should have saved him, but he could be a first-round guy. It seems like the consensus is that he's going to be drafted higher than a lot of guys are going to rank him as a player just because they think they're going to work something out and develop him. And that's kind of what happened with Sean Gary, right? So makes sense with the team. Dolphins at 29. The Dolphins... The Dolphins are a weird team because the offensive linemen available, like, I've, I've given them Falele before, given them Ryman before. I don't love the tackles at this point. But I also, I don't love the receivers. Like, I, I do like George Pickens a lot. I think his potential is crazy. I do like John Mechie. I like Christian Watson. But do I like them at 29? Sometimes. Some days, you know, I'll throw them in there. But I'm not sure 
if I like them here. I think Epicady could sneak into the first. I think some of those guys certainly could. I know, like, <sighs> Noah Igbenogany was a healthy scratch a lot of the year. I think Kyler Gordon could go first round. I'm going to go Andrew Booth Jr. He's really good. He could be highly effective in the nickel. And he's available at 29. And he's probably going to be better than Noah Igbenogany right away. I kind of want to go offense here, but I don't love the offensive linemen. And I don't love the receivers for them. So it's either that or Christian Watson or George Pickens. Take your pick. I have nothing against David Bell. I just don't really think he's a first-round player. I think he could go early on day two. I don't think he's a first-round guy. I think George Pickens could sneak into the first. I think Christian Watson could as well. I just don't think David Bell will. That could change, but that's where I am on that. For the Chiefs, Logan Hall makes a ton of sense to me. Fits that defensive scheme so well. I think him playing next to Chris Jones would be an amazing fit. I like Logan Hall. Um, similar to Peyton Turner in that inside-outside flexibility, at least size-wise, I think Hall is someone that can fit a 3-4 as a defensive end uh, much better than uh, Peyton Turner, though. If you remember Turner coming out of Houston a year ago, draft by the Saints, I think Logan Hall could also find his way into the first round. Bengals at 31. You got to think offensive line here. And let's go Tyler Smith, actually. Tulsa left tackle, actually. A lot of guys think he can make the transition to guard. He's mean. He's athletic. He's also like 19 or 20. He's very, very young. I think he's the youngest offensive lineman in this class, at least near the top of the board. And um, certainly could go inside the first round. And the Bengals certainly need to upgrade their offensive line. And then the last pick of the first round will be... It's got to be N'Kobe Dean, man. I, how does he fall to this spot every time for me? But I'm doing it again. Nicobe Dean's a great player. I think he's a great fit for the Lions that really could use some athleticism at linebacker and some talent. And that's exactly what Nicobe Dean offers. But that's going to do it for this mock draft, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Going to be live on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Bengal, like right now as you're watching this, hopefully. It's a, a long all-day event. Tomorrow, the next day, we're going to be in on it. Updates to come on Twitter, twitter.com slash YouTube. All the links are down in the description. And I will see you in the next one. Take it easy.